Hey guys, Travis Gillespie here, and today we're looking at polygons. And we've talked about polygons somewhat in lessons past, but we were looking at triangles and quadrilaterals, and we never necessarily said they're polygons. So let's actually look at uh, different types of polygons beyond just triangles and quadrilaterals. So uh, a couple things that we're going to do here, we're just going to name the different types of polygons. And from there, we can um, look at how many sides, the number of sides, that are in each polygon, number of sides. Also, what we might want to look at <clears throat> are two different types of polygons. We have one type. They're known as a regular polygon. I'll get to um, how we define a regular polygon in a minute. And also, there's another type of polygon, a polygon, G-O-N. And the last type, well, if they're not regular polygons, then they're not regular. So basically, I'm just going to write not regular right here. I'll fix that in in a second not regular. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, fix that in. So in, not regular. Okay, so let's go ahead and still build our table just a little bit. So let's go ahead now and start looking at uh, what a polygon actually is. Well there's two things that make a polygon a polygon. It is a closed plane figure Also, it has three or more sides. So I'm just going to write three plus three or more sides. Okay, that's what makes up a polygon. And the first polygon we're going to look at is a triangle. And we know that a triangle has three sides. Three sides. And if I were to draw a regular polygon, which was a triangle, what I would do is have to make sure that there were some new features. It can't just be a closed plane figure and have three or more sides. It has to have some extra qualities to it. So a regular polygon, um, one thing we note is that the, a the side lengths are all congruent. So you have to have all side lengths congruent. In fact, let's go make that note over here. Regular polygons So all of the sides, or all of the side lengths, I'm just going to write sides for short. Also, all of the angles, so all of the sides and angles, are congruent. They're the same size. They're equal in value. So for a triangle to be a regular polygon, it has to have one, two, three equal side lengths. Also, all of the angle measures, this angle, this angle, and this angle have to be congruent. They have to be the same value. So all you need for a triangle that's not a regular polygon, you just need one side or one angle to um, not match the description here. So uh, when you find that all of the angles are not congruent or all of the side lengths are not congruent, it's not a regular polygon. And I can see right here I have a right triangle and also the angle above it, this angle is less than 90 degrees, it's acute, therefore this is a polygon but it's not regular. Cool, let's move down to the next shape. So the next shape we have here is a quadrilateral. Quad, Q-U-A-D, real lateral. Quadrilaterals have four sides. And for it to be a regular polygon, well, it's basically a square. I need a shape that has four congruent sides. One, two, three, four. Also, I need to make sure that the angle measures are all 90 degrees or that they're all congruent in this case. So this would be an example of a regular polygon that's a quadrilateral. But let's look at one that's not. Well, I could draw a rectangle. Or I could just draw any four-sided figure. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. One polygon, it's a quadrilateral, it's not regular. Okay, so the next shape that we have here, it's a pentagon. I'm just going to create a little bit more space. We know a pentagon has, well, five sides. And I'm starting to see a pattern here. We've moved from three sides, four sides, down to five sides now. Let's create the shape. And for it to be a regular polygon, all of the sides 
and angle measures have got to be congruent. Now, obviously my shape is not drawn perfectly, so one thing I can do to help justify that this, uh, all the sides are congruent is to create hash marks. One hash mark there, one there. Do that on all of the sides, and this uh, lets people know that each side is the same length. Also, all of the angles are congruent. Therefore, I can see that this would be our regular polygon, which is a pentagon in this case. And I could go ahead and draw a five-sided figure now that is not a regular polygon. And now we can see that, hey, none of the sides are equal in value. The angle measures are not the same either. Okay, moving on down to the next shape, we have a hexagon here. Cool, this is a six-sided figure. So do my best to create congruent sides and angles. And again, it's not drawn perfectly, but I can use hash marks to let people know they were meant to be drawn the same length on each side. And the angle measures are going to be the same, so therefore we're going to call this our regular uh, polygon. It's a hexagon in this case. And now let's go ahead and draw one that's not regular. So I can see that I have one, two, three, four, let's say five, and six sides. Okay, so we can see here that none of the angles match up, or not all of the angles match up, and the side lengths are definitely different side, uh, different values. I'm going to continue on with this table. Alright, so our next uh, shape has seven sides. It's called a heptagon. And I'm running out of room here. I'm going to stop drawing a uh, a lot of shapes and there is one other thing I want to add when you're naming polygons how do they get their names well they're named based off of the number of sides or actually what I could write down here is uh, this is the number of sides also it's the number of angles so there just happens to be the same amount of angles or sides in each polygon a triangle has three angles it has three sides therefore try must mean three Quadrilateral, it has four sides or four angles. Quad means four. A pentagon, it has five sides. Penta means five. A hexagon is named for having six sides or six angles, so therefore, hexa means six. Now I can continue on further. I wanna just uh, get some more good notes in here. So let's move on to just the last couple of shapes. We have an octagon. It has eight sides. This is the shape that looks like a uh, stop sign. Let's see if I can just draw it and say this will probably be the last shape I put on these notes. There we go. There's an octagon. All of the side links are congruent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have eight congruent angles as well. Let's move over to drawing a figure that is an octagon, but it's not a regular polygon. Let's see what we can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool stuff. Now a nine-sided figure, we would call it a non-agon. It has nine sides. And because I'm running out of room, I'm not gonna draw the shapes here. A decagon is a 10-sided figure. It has 10 sides or 10 angles. I won't draw the shape. So the last thing I wanna do is just get enough room to look at my most favorite of all of the polygons. And what uh, mathematicians have done, they've said, hey, you know what, we have well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shapes already in the list for students to remember the names of these shapes. And rather than memorizing a hundred more different shape names, why don't we say once you get past a decagon, what you can do is say, you know what, any shape beyond uh, having 10 sides or beyond a decagon, we're going to call it an n-gon.
So if the shape has 11 sides, students, you're okay, it's okay to say, you know what, we're dealing with an n-gon here. Or if the shape has 100 sides, then you would say, you know what, it's still an n-gon. So the number of sides depends on the shape that you're actually dealing with and the number of sides that are in that shape. So we always write down an n-gon has n amount of sides or angles. It's a variable that can be replaced with a number. And since we don't know the shape here, we're going to stop drawing and we'll start looking at some more problems. See you guys.